Copilot Chat is this little inline chat window that comes with the latest versions of GitHub Copilot, now in several IDEs like VS Code. I have another video on my channel that shows you how to set up Copilot Chat. It's only a short video because it is super, super simple to set up. But in this video, I'm gonna show you five ways that I use Copilot Chat on a daily basis to be more productive. Now this isn't by any means a comprehensive list and I'm gonna try not to cover any of the tips that other YouTubers might have given you. These are my things that I use for AI and so I hope you find this useful. And the number one is explaining a repository. Copilot Chat can read the file that you currently have open in your IDE. So if I'm doing something in an open source repository from GitHub or maybe a large internal code repository in my organization, then that repository is likely to have a readme file. So what you can do is open that readme.med file in Copilot Chat, go into that chat window and just say, hey, what does this repository do? Copilot will essentially summarize the readme for you and it will call out a couple of the key points that you might need to know. You can also ask follow-up questions like, how can I contribute to this repository? And if the information is in there, it will help you out. The second thing I use it for a lot is making lots of changes at once in a file. So let's say you have a TypeScript file like this with loads of functions in it. And I want to make all of these functions available to my entire code base by exporting them. Well, in the old days, you might have done a multi-cursor thing here in VS Code to create lots of cursors and then start typing like this or maybe find and replace you could use with some clever regex in the find and replace. Well, with Copilot, you can just highlight all of these functions and then click right click, go to Copilot, inline chat, and then say, hey, export all these functions. And then it gives you a suggestion, you can accept that suggestion and you can see that it's exported all of those from our file. This is really good because it's a lot smarter than doing a simple find and replace in your code. If you want to, you can ask it to put them in a namespace and export that namespace, which is also something I'll do from time to time. And if I do that now, look at how the AI has created a name for this namespace based on the types of the functions inside. So that's definitely something you can't just do with find and replace. So this is pretty cool and I do this quite a lot. One thing I also do quite a lot of TypeScript is creating TypeScript types from some JSON. So let's say you're calling an API on the web and that API doesn't publish any TypeScript definitions. Well, if they give you some example JSON that comes back from the API, or maybe you make a test request in Postman and you collect some of that example JSON, then you can paste that JSON into VS Code and you can say to Copilot, create me some TypeScript types from this JSON. So just like we're going to do here. And the cool thing about using AI to generate TypeScript types over like an online type generator, which do exist, is that with AI, it understands a context. So it'll actually use the names of the variables and things to guess what type of data it is and therefore name the types. So that's evident in the way that it's created the type names here in this example. A TypeScript type generator will probably just call these type one and type two, but Copilot has actually given these types relevant names based on the properties inside, which is really something that only AI can do. And it's super, super like useful to be able to do that in Copilot. Next up, we've got regex. Copilot is really good at regex. So I'd hazard to guess that GitHub Copilot is probably better at writing regex than 99.99% .99 of all software developers because we hate regex and Copilot loves it. So you can ask it things like, give me some regex to validate an email address. So there you go, it will give you some regex from an email address, probably scraped from Stack Overflow or something. But what I tend to use this for is to give it some text and then a description for what I want the regex to do. So for example, you could say, write a regex that will match the text inside the brackets in this example, and that will work. And I found that to actually be super, super reliable. You can also ask it to explain parts of the regex too, if you like. So I can say, uh, what does this part do? And it will give you a nice breakdown. Now, if you want to validate that this regex is properly created, and always you should validate code that's created by AI because it's not guaranteed to be 100% accurate, but you can do that. There's an amazing tool called regex101.com. And that's what I usually do, is create the regex in Copilot and paste it into regex101, just to check that it's valid, check it with a few different sets of data and things like that. But I've not actually had any yet from Copilot that didn't work on regex101. So the accuracy does seem to be pretty high. Lastly, something I do a lot, especially if I'm working in JavaScript and not in TypeScript, is ask Copilot to wrap some code in a try-catch statement. 
JavaScript is awful for throwing errors at runtime. That's one of the reasons why I'm such a huge fan of TypeScript. But if I'm having to work on some JavaScript code and it's throwing an error and I just can't figure it out, then you can highlight a few lines of code, open up the inline chat and just say, wrap this in a try catch. This is really useful because sometimes you do actually need to refactor the code a bit in order to put a try catch around it, especially if it declares variables that might go out of scope. And Copilot will handle that for you and it'll make those refactors. So this is just a dead simple way to hack about with failing code to make it easier to debug. And this is especially useful with promises. So if you're using async and await, and asynchronous code is like a whole order of magnitude more difficult to debug than synchronous code. So adding the odd try catch around those things can really help pin down those runtime errors. So there you have it, five ways that I use GitHub Copilot chat to save me a lot of time. And hopefully you can benefit from these as well. But this has only really scratched the surface of what's possible. Copilot chat is a dynamic tool with immense potential and there's always more to discover. So before I go, here's a few additional suggestions for further leveraging Copilot chat in your development experience. So you could do code review assistance. Next time you're reviewing code, try asking Copilot chat for insights. It can provide suggestions on code optimizations, point out potential bugs, even suggest better coding practices. Also, if you're learning a new language or framework, if you're venturing into programming language or framework that's new to you, ask Copilot chat as your assistant. Ask it for syntax help, ask it for best practices, ask it for some simple examples to get you started. Also, custom code snippet generation. You can challenge it to generate custom code snippets based on your specific requirements in the context of your project. So this can be a great way to see different approaches to a same problem. Integrating APIs. Working with new APIs can be daunting. Copilot chat can help you understand how to integrate with them in your project effectively. So that saves you the time spent on loads and loads of reading documentation. Lastly, like brainstorming sessions, that's quite exciting. You can use Copilot chat as your brainstorming partner. So if you've got an idea for a project, you can discuss your idea with GitHub Copilot and it might offer you perspectives or solutions that you hadn't necessarily considered yourself. So remember the key here is to make the most of Copilot chat is curiosity and experimentation. So keep exploring, keep challenging the AI, and most importantly, have fun with all these new tools. Don't forget to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and insights into the ever-evolving world of software development. My name is James Charlesworth, and I'll catch you in the next video here on the Trades Code YouTube channel.